So we're getting into Cimarron now for this Best Picture episode, which is a film from 1931 based on the book of the same name, uh, which was, I think, a novel from 1929. So there's a couple of years difference so between the book release and the film release. Um, this film sees a main character, Yancey Cravat, try and claim land in the Wild West and, and sort of, you know, uh, raise a family in, in, a, in a lawless land. Or at least that's what it should be about. In fact, the film isn't really about very much because it's not very interesting. It's... Now, here's the thing, because the Broadway melody wasn't a very interesting film either. And that, you know, was so static in the way it, it, it utilised its camera. This, on the other hand, is interesting to look at at least, but it's just its storytelling is just so lame. It, it really feels, it feels paper thin, to say the least. And, and where Broadway Melody was just, just awful, this at least had some redeeming qualities, I, I think. The, how it utilises its extras for its, its big, you know, big set pieces is really good. And the sets are great. The sets are fantastic for the time. And this was the most expensive movie ever made um, at that period. And I think one of the key things is that whilst it looks really good, and especially the beginning scene, the beginning, the, the opening scene, where our main character Yancey tries to sort of claim land in in the Untold West, but is event is is thwarted uh, quite stupidly, I have to say. Um, he puts down a horse where the rider fell off. It's a woman that took his land, or the land he was going to claim from him. She sticks a white flag in the land. Um, she falls off her horse and asks him to shoot the horse, because its legs are broken. And he does it, but she runs off and uh, just immediately you just think he's, he's a bit of an idiot. Um, but yeah, the, that opening scene, where it's sort of like a, a start line and the race, when at like 2 p.m. 2 million acres of untouched land are ready to be claimed. You know, it's it's kind of like the starting start of a of a huge race. And it, it is quite breathtaking to, to watch. And I mean, in terms of those moments, those moments of scale are really very good and and especially at the later on in the film when um when Yancey tries to defend the town from you know outlaws that come and or the defend the town he's in from outlaws i think it's, it's osage he settles in a in a town of osage and and sort of raises his family there and builds a new newspaper um but when outlaws try and you know basically just take everyone's shit he defends the town and that's a very good moment, but it's it doesn't last very long. And this is this is my main problem with it is is that the, all the interesting moments last maybe what a minute out of a two-hour film, and there are maybe about three of them. Um, it's it's a film which I found incredibly racist. I mean, that's that's. For the time it was made, I, I understand, you know, the historical significance of it. Um, but it, just something that struck me, you know, it didn't, it didn't bother me because of the, the period it was filmed in, and that was that was kind of the acceptable thing to do. Another thing is that the main character himself, Yancey, isn't all that interesting as a person. You know, you, you, know, you see all these westerns with big anti-heroes and. You know they they're, they're sort of outlaws, but they're, they're they're good in a way, but they have a, have a moral compass that's sort of really grey. Um, <clears throat> whereas Yancey doesn't have that. He's a bit of a goody two shoes, and it 
really isn't great to watch because he's just in a in a town that you know is pretty lawless or it's to me it was represented as pretty lawless and his his character is just a bit too good and everyone cheers about how great Yancey is but really he's not that great he doesn't have any character to it there's no development he starts off as a goody two-shoes and ends as a goody two-shoes and it was really his wife that sort of stole the picture from him because she is she's a mixed bag I would say mainly due to the fact that she gets shafted um, when Yancey goes off on adventures um, in the Wild West and you don't get to see them because you know that would be interesting and the film's not about that it's about slowly building to you know 40 years of life yeah, with Yancey but she's a more interesting character when she's on on her own because she builds something without her husband and sort of it but but it all falls apart when he comes back because she's all like oh I haven't seen you in for sometimes years and she's just like oh let's jump back in the bedroom I mean that's not literally what happens, but it it's kind of, it kind of feels like that's what happens. Um, you know, I do think it is well directed, and some of the acting is really good. I mean, it is. It is the main character is primarily Yancey, and I think that's kind of wrong because he's not the most interesting person. And I mean, I'm uh, just sort of repeating myself at this point. And I mean, <laughs> when I saw the poster for this. I was quite baffled, uh, especially after seeing the film, I was even more baffled because it shows, you know, our main character Yancey, you know, with his arm back across, like, his wife, and he's holding a gun and his shirt's ripped, and it looks like, oh, this is going to be like a, you know, he's defending his home from outlaws type western, which it kind of is to some degree, but he's... On the on, on the poster, at least, it, he has a he has a moral. He's morally grey. It looks like. But that's not what we got. What we got was pretty much nothing. I mean, you could probably sit there and just switch your brain off, and then for two hours, and suddenly, oh, the film's over. You know what was accomplished? Absolutely nothing. It really baffles me that it won Best Picture that year. Um, yeah. Oh, I mean, I just, I just don't understand. You had great films like Wings and All Quiet on the Western Front. You know, winning, winning Best Picture awards. You know, there was there was one bad film out of out of, out of the three, which was the Broadway Melody. But you know, this. Uh, there's been two exceptionally well-directed and brilliant films and two really, really bad ones. Although this one isn't as bad as the Broadway Melody, I'll, I'll give it that at least. So, I mean, what else is there to say other than just, you know, avoid it? Because, you know, it's, it's, it's a piece of film history. But it's not really worth your time or your effort to seek out. So, yeah, and it's, uh, that's quite depressing. There's only been two good films that we've reviewed so far. Thank you so much for watching this best picture video and this was another unscripted review I thought it was it was better you know it seems it seems you know all the bad films are gonna probably be unscripted because yeah it, it, I feel I can just talk naturally and talk more if if I don't like something 
Um, but thanks for watching anyway. Um, be sure to check out every two weeks there'll be another Best Picture video. Be sure to rate, comment, subscribe to the channel. All your views and subscriptions really mean a lot and your comments because you know if you enjoy this content and enjoy the stuff on the channel like the film reviews and the, and the thoughts on film um, and, and the other shows we've got you know if you enjoy those we will keep making them and if you enjoy this I'll keep making this if not I'll still keep making it <laughs> um, but anyway the, um, you know I don't want to get too rambly but anyway thanks thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in two weeks